it, but that's all right. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll kick off the session with 85 attendees right now. So hi, everybody. I'd love to give you some quick contacts and rules for the day. Just to quickly recap again for you, Kritika as well, Vijay as well, when you write your comments in chat, please select all panelists and attendees so everybody can see your chat. There is a separate section for Q&A where you can ask your questions real time as they come. In fact, here's a pro tip. In case you have an answer to a question, you can also answer that in the chat for everybody else because we're all senior CHROs and leaders in this room. So those are the rules for the Zoom chat. We're very excited because we just bought Zoom yesterday. But uh, I'd love to introduce you guys to the panelists now. We have four individuals. Of course, you know the four companies they are from. An interesting trivia is all four of them come from established companies and have gone through the initial phase of adapting to the basic changes required for COVID, right? And if Angraj, you could move to the next slide now. Uh, I want to give you some context so that you understand where they're coming from. Oyo has 12,000 employees. JTM has 8,000 employees. OLX has 3,000 employees. And Udan has 3K employees as well, right? And this is at a global scale within their purview. Uh, of course, the KPIs, when I was having calls with all of them, are very similar, right? So uh, all, all four of them are, have a like blended mix of uh, retention, which is top talent, uh, efficiency in people costs, Engagement, which is sometimes measured by ENPS, learning and development, productivity, and of course, virtual technology that can be adapted. So those are the commonalities, right? But now I want to sort of double click on certain interesting things that are happening in all these companies. So OLX is going through a remote MA, right? So how do you have a merger in a remote setup, right? So I think that'll be a very interesting area for Pooja to double check on when we proceed today. In fact, she told me on Saturday that the secondhand market, right, actually booms in a down downturn against like, you know, the common notion that e-commerce might go down. Uh, Paytm, on the other hand, a few folks uh, earlier last month was, uh, were telling me that, uh, you know, the lockdown is like demonetization, right? And Paytm is an interesting company which was heavily impacted by demonetization as well, right? And Rohit, of course, uh, saw a downturn like a GE as well. So you'll have a lot to talk about uh, the GE situation as well. OYO, of course, we see it in front of our eyes as a B2C company. The hotel industry is deeply hit. So, of course, Dinesh can give a lot of context on how they've uh, handled that situation. And Oran, of course, is skyrocketing more than ever. So this is context for these companies. And uh, to move on to the next slide, I also want to talk about their backgrounds. So I have this funny theory that almost all HR people are either from XLRI or TIS, and uh, that's what happened. <laughs> two of our panelists are from XLRI, and two of them are from TIS. You can see which companies they used to work for. Like I said, the interesting context is all of them came from established companies and are now at startups. So they have both sides to the story as well. And here's my final and favorite slide for the day. Of course, you can move on. Uh, they all have a very interesting personal life outside of work, right? So Dinesh is a wildlife photographer and he's also into bungee jumping. Rohit, on the other hand, is a racket sport champion. He used to represent his school and MBA for table tennis, badminton and tennis, right? Pooja, of course, loves playing Dudo King with her son. And Nitin is a movie buff, right? Like he, he loves movies like Aaron Brockovic and even Lamhe, right? All the way from Julia Roberts to maybe Anil Kapoor. So some very interesting like sort of people on our panel today. And uh, I think with this, I'd love to open the session and give you a time check in the context. We have five themes that we will be covering today. Each theme will spend 10 minutes. And the fifth theme is, of course, open to all. Like the fifth theme we'll construct together based on the questions on chat. And I'd love to open the first theme now. And Ingraj, you can stop sharing the screen so we can focus on the panelists. So. Question to you, Rohit, now, as CHRO, what has been your or Paytm's unique philosophy to sail through this pandemic? So basically, <clears throat> what has changed in the expectations from your HR team? How are you prioritizing things? How are you scaling up your team to deal with the situation? What is your philosophy to sail through this pandemic? Yeah, I think sailing through is, a, is, a, is an aspirational word. Uh, I think we're all kind of navigating through it. Uh, we, we're all navigating through it. Uh, it's been very interesting. I, I, I think there has been no copybook or, uh, you know, a, a kind of a template that one can, one can pick up from 
you know uh, as we go through these uh, past few months and as we pace ourselves for what 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 happens in the future uh, the key challenges of course have been around uh, the business first you know because i i i think the business sales plan and and i, and I think i speak for many many companies uh, has changed uh, you know what we had made as a plan in the month of february uh, got drastically changed you know after march uh, april may kind of you know came in so how how does one how does one reimagine the the entire business plan uh, how how do you look at costs uh, you know costs costs become important because you know if the revenues get impacted then how do you focus on costs first and and, and take costs out and that's been a i would say a second area of focus uh, people people uh, increasingly so uh, you know i i, I would say uh i uh, if if um, i think the paytm at paytm we were i think the sixth employee fifth or sixth employee in all of india uh was in paytm employee so i i, I just remember march 3rd or march 4th is is when um, is when our employee got got impacted and we were on headlines and uh, we really had to i don't think at least i personally i, I know many of you but i i don't think i anticipated the 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 scale of this of, of of this pandemic or you know now we have 8 lakh people now impacted 9 lakh people now so the sixth employee was ours and i think uh, the focus on people increasingly uh, and and rightly so has has been one more area of huge huge focus for us uh, hr team i think has been uh, initiated by fire uh, yes we are a very strong hr team uh, a good hr team but how to work remotely and, and how to focus on elements on business costs and people uh, as a team Uh, and 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 look at their their changing priorities with kids you know working from home with uh, with, 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 with the entire country being on a lockdown that's been a a fourth uh, a fourth area of, of focus and then i would say elements on well being employee well being uh, as a part of it and equally importantly all of us in hr as well you know because uh, you know the, the, i think uh, it happens to a, to a lot of us we are so uh, focused on focusing on everybody around us you know how how do we stay connected with ourselves and that's been the the other area of uh, of of focus for us so just some these broad themes of what we've been working on and i think i can uh, uh, I, i i can kind of talk more as we you know get into more questions around this i'll, I'll pause here thanks roy in fact dinesh when we were speaking on saturday you were talking about how remote work has been very interesting for you as well so if you could double mm-hmm. from your philosophy uh how expectations have changed in a post pay cut scenario it's been pretty intense for oyo of course and how are you prioritizing or changing the expectations for your hr team sure i think it's uh, it's it's pretty much similar to what rohit said from a from a priorities perspective i think the one thing that's that's becoming clearer right as we as we step into this is the the certainty about uncertainty is is so much uh it's so important to communicate that right i mean no one today knows uh, no company or probably even governments are struggling to understand what is this what is happening and therefore it's philosophically speaking it's important to be authentic and say look there is uncertainty and that's the only thing we can tell you right now right and that's the that's the underpinning philosophy of being transparent being upfront and being candid with employees right um so having said that to to address your specific question on and therefore priorities flow from there okay so what that means is i focus a lot more when i say i oyo focuses a lot more on we were always a people intensive company continue to be so right um at least you know uh, for the foreseeable future and therefore engaging much more at a personal level uh trying to drive these priorities is uh, is important as far as hr leaders are concerned and you know i'll talk about remote working i think one thing that we've been very conscious and and trying to address this is see when when people especially the the team members talk to various employees there is an inherent value conflict right these are the people that i have hired these are the people that i have to go and you know speak about different actions there's a there's an inherent value conflict that you have to address so people spend a lot of time hr team spends a lot of time trying to address that uh as far as remote working is concerned um you know it's been it's i've been pleasantly surprised uh actually people that uh you know what what you thought is not possible remotely has become a huge possibility and i'll give you a very small example to illustrate our sales folks what we call as supply folks right used to used to do three meetings a day uh for closing deals right now that see because there are no distractions there's no commute there are you know sort of you know it's much more focused on an average people do about eight meetings a day today 
right? And that's not because they've been mandated to do so. That's because they've just found time to do that, right? Uh, so it's it's actually become uh, a lot more efficient and and uh, uh, sort of you know uh, engaging for us. Right? Uh, but I'll stop there and would love to hear experiences of others. Thanks, Dinesh. Uh, uh, an input for Sorry, Rohit, I'm just covering that bit already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you can switch to gallery view, uh, because Dinesh has a separate mic and a separate video on, right? So maybe you can Got switch it. to gallery view. And in garage view as well, if you can do that in the admin side as well. So that can help everybody. But thanks, Dinesh. Uh, Uja, would you like to sort of uh, double check on this as well? What are your priorities uh, at OLX? And of course, how has it changed for you? Well, um, I would say uh, all companies are dealing with this in a very different way and probably to the best of everyone's ability because everyone's new to this sort of an environment. Having said that, I think at OLX, uh, we've been, um, I would say, a tad more privileged uh, to be a very uh, startup-y ecosystem, but with a hundred year old maturity of process or NASPAs. So the combination of two have really helped us. And for us, I think the way business looked at this, um, you know, dynamic was in two parts. One was is uh, employee safety, and then quickly we jumped to job conservation. So I think there were two parts to it that we wanted to marry, and we wanted to ensure that for employee well-being comes first with job conservation, and both need to go hand in hand. Uh, this definitely had an impact on the business, and it really. Uh, kind of pulled it down in the first few months of, of the COVID impact. And then we also started to focus on leadership communication and connection. Like I think Dinesh mentioned, the uh, certainty of uncertainty is, is extremely important to communicate. And I was also reading in one of the researches that employees find their company communication to be that source of truth of what is going on and where I need to take the next steps. So leadership communication become like a very, very important agenda. As the things started to shape up and we realized this is not a short term uh, issue, it's going to be longer term. Uh, we've had to start thinking about what are different productivity metrics or frameworks that we use today and how are they going to shift for tomorrow. Uh, if folks are going to work from home and people have to deal with work-life integration, which is personal life and professional life, what do productivity matrices do really look like? So, and, and then at the same time, you also have to manage costs. Um, so how does business really figure out what their forecast looks like and how do we need to accelerate those productivities by what innovative tools? So technology became like extremely important to reach out to the customer. Uh, one of our businesses is car businesses, car transaction business OLX cash my car. And there we've been experimenting virtual inspections so that we reduce the lead time of an inspection and closure faster. So everything now is more to invest into technology and try to figure out how we reach out to the customer and make uh, deals uh, faster. These have been uh, pretty much the priorities that we've been uh, working on in the last uh, few months. And um, yeah, I think, it's not been easy and there is no straight answer to, to the stuff that we've been doing. Thanks, Pooja. So I think now we have like a very broad context of like everybody now, but uh, Nitin, with you, I thought we'll start with the specifics for the day, right? And the specific question I have for you at Uran, of course, is are there any unique uh, changes that you made in your policies or your strategy? And when I refer to policies and strategy, anything, any change in hiring, any change in onboarding, any change in L&D. In fact, uh, somebody on LinkedIn commented saying that, you know, in this new era, we could now treat people with disabilities at par with other people, like in terms of mobility, right? And I thought that's a fantastic change somebody recommended. But any changes you've made, Adoran? So, and I think as everybody has been talking about from an HR standpoint, this really becomes a crucial time given that you have a lot of people who are working with you, a lot of new joinees who join the organization and do not have the context of physically being present and getting assimilated into the organization. So while on one side, the challenge is really how do you make sure these people get assimilated into the Iran culture, at the same time, making them productive, understanding the context. And most when you have really 3,000 odd employees where the demographic age is around 27, 28, you have young, passionate people who not only want to make a difference, but also want to learn. How do you keep them really intellectually engaged, you know, 
to the fat. And really, this really time becomes when you want to make sure that apart from work, you know, which can become quite monotonous, being on the hangouts almost all the time and talking to colleagues and maybe maybe your suppliers and the buyers, it really is about how do you add value to them. Now, when you come to office, you often end up having conversations. There's a lot of exchange that happens in terms of ideas, thoughts, and wisdom, which really leads to your growth. Now, one of the that we had was that how do we make sure in terms of near future, how do you make sure the learning doesn't stop? And one of the things that really, really as a team quickly put together was our gurus of Uran and Ignite. These were really the things where we said that fine, from an organizational standpoint, there are certain people who we think are uh, subject matter experts in the areas when you talk about SQL, Python, and other areas. And Chinese lifestyle is a category or mobile phones is a category. So we really made sure that we created something like peer-to-peer -peer learning as an effective a way of people engaging with each other. And we, we really quick started this particular uh, initiative. And I think uh, we started something on some March end. And today when we talk about more than uh, 1,300 people have actually benefited from these sessions. And, and to the contrary of thinking that we really have to push people to start attending, to our surprise, the fact was that the moment the first session was out, we had more than 250 participants, you know, registering themselves for the first session. And that really made very good because one, in startup, it becomes very difficult for you to take people to the classrooms. And for someone else coming from outside and trying to tell them, okay, this is how things happen. When they really feel that, okay, the context is so different. And we are so different from the way others operate. So getting that kind of comfort that yes, someone who's talking to you and some of the tips and some of the insights that the person is giving is really something that you can really apply because they as much understand the context as you do really help. And I think that was really a quick starter for us, you know, in terms of how do you really engage and make sure that the learning element, which very often gets missed when you're working from home is actually being continued at an organizational level. I think uh, I really like Guru's of Oran, like, as you mentioned it. In fact, uh, this resonates with the discussion I was having with Rohit, where Rohit said, like post uh, lockdown, post uh, like budget cuts, how do you sort of efficiently drive new initiatives with low cost? And I think peer-to-peer -peer learning is a fantastic example of that. So Dinesh, any failures or learnings that you're proud of, like which of course led to changes, right? So the whole theme around this discussion, right? What changes did you make at OIO? Any learnings or failures from them? And especially for you, I would sort of want to understand for the frontline workforce as well, because you would have frontline employees as well. Yeah. So I was uh, very intrigued by what, what Nitin said. Um, two or three things. I think there have been, you know, from a failures perspective, uh, I think there have been, there have been many. Right? I, will, I will acknowledge uh, in this forum um, that, look, the way, I think the way we've, engage with employees, with customers, with partners uh, now has been very, very different from how it, was, it used to happen, right? And there's a lot of learning that we've gained, right? Uh, I will acknowledge that. But let me give you an example. I think in terms of changes, some of these transactional things that used to occupy a lot of people's time has gone out of the window. Uh, work from home policy, right? I mean, there is nothing called work from home policy anymore. Everybody's working from home. Yes, there are guardrails, but it's not a you know, you don't have to spend time explaining that, you know, your manager is responsible for sanction. Travel policy. A lot of such administrative stuff has just gone out of the window and it's taken and has actually, you know, released bandwidth from a lot of people, right? Um, second is personalized learning. It's, and it's very heartwarming. Uh, actually, so many people have come to me at OYO and said, earlier, all these learnings, whether uh, online, whether it is whichever way, used to be group learnings, right? People would come together in some forum, they would learn together. Here, there's an opportunity for Dinesh as an individual to, to exactly get to know where that person is and what that person needs to do to achieve a certain objective. And that is an opportunity which is, which is I think, very powerful, right? And we've been able to encash and leverage that significantly. Uh, and it shows uh, uh, in, in various places, right? Now, um, third thing, just from a change, I think the face of the rate and pace of interaction through town halls, through one-on-one -on -one meetings, through skip levels, through any of these things as a, as a structural way of actually building trust and solving people's issues 
has has grown exponentially uh, you know beyond doubt right um, and and these are these are just some small examples of how uh, how some of this change and transformation is taking place um, while we we continue to and i think rohit made a uh, and pooja also made this point of how do you how do you get technology into everyday lives for us you know as a, as a hotel business one of the most important things that people look for is you know accessibility affordability it's ubiquity safety has become so much more critical just because of you know the uh, the pandemic and therefore how do you create how do you creatively look at ways of ensuring people stay at hotels without actually coming in contact right so a lot of innovation is start happening uh, at this point so these are some structural changes that have been made right um but what it's what it's doing is it's resulting into people coming together more than ever before uh continuously engaging to say you know what are the five other things that i have in store for you which the organization should consider i think that's a uh, that's huge energy that we are trying to uh, you know in cash about got it so, so dinesh i think i i really like a couple of questions that have come up on q and a as well like when you were when you were speaking So maybe we can start with Prachi from Delivery. So she says, with an eye on building focus, frugality, innovation, and agility, how, in your opinion, can HR managers be future ready? I think this is very similar to the question I asked. How are we developing our HR team to scale up to the challenge? And Rohit, you were asking this question as well on Saturday. So maybe the other panelists, you could sort of double click on how do we develop and get our HR teams ready because they're not used to this. Um. maybe maybe i could just uh, quickly share some views here so the one thing that we uh, experienced in hr is we had gone for an offsite in february towards the end of february early march and that was the time when the covid situation really sprung like it really became very big and we were in agra at that time and there was some story happening that there are folks in agra and they're not traced and stuff and infection can be anywhere so as soon as we came back to delhi on the 3rd of march uh i have a group of you know hr and admin folks the entire 50 plus folks had to work from home for 15 days we just took a call that we will do that and we will quarantine ourselves now we were the first to quarantine ourselves in the company and that pretty much gave us slightly an uh, an advantage over the rest of the company as to what challenges we're facing uh we had lots of things to figure out like we had to fix close performance appraisal cycle on video all calibrations on video we had to do a lot of uh, work around compensation on video and stuff like that which generally is like you know in in person conversations and stuff so i think what also transpired through that um, uh, entire experience was that the hr team really re- understood that there are certain things that we will have to bring into our ecosystem which is use more of of the zoom technology or or any other video conferencing technology to be able to solve a lot of things also when you are doing performance management processes and conversations just knowing and reading up a bit more of how could i done it better when i'm doing it digitally really started to help we immediately started to get more content for the hr folks and put hr folks through a little bit of learning ahead of the curve so we could probably make conversations giving and receiving feedback became a very difficult one on the digital medium like you know you're you're sitting you can read the expression of the person but you know and and then you can moderate yourself but digitally if you had to do that then we had to put managers through several sort of programs to help them understand it's not going to be easy we have struggled ourselves so we're we are helping you understand that giving and receiving feedback itself is going to be a little challenging so we have to give a lot of content not sure whether all of that really worked but understanding that technology will probably drive a lot of outcomes and at the same time you have to keep the human element alive uh that sort of combination is continuous learning right now for us we're still trying to figure out how going through that process is going to help partner better with hr and at the same time deliver outcomes i'm re- currently in an in a situation where we're doing this merger of two companies we acquired frontier car group uh uh and process and olx invested like 400 million to uh, acquire 
a frontier car group. And now we're at a place where we've brought the leadership groups together. We've brought the second layer leadership group together and all of that did, happened on the video. And one of our initial exercises completely bombed. So we said, okay, fine, we'll do a purpose exercise with the leadership group. We would go in and we would type all our purposes ourselves and then those purposes will come up live on the screen and then we will pick the best purpose. It was such a disaster. We just couldn't manage picking that really well because all I was doing is reading everyone's purpose and everyone was sitting quiet. And we were like, this is not working. <laughs> it's not going to generate any engagement and conversation. So I had to quickly flip. And then we figured out what are more mediums. Like, you know, today breakout rooms are like a, like a thing of the future. Like, let's do it now. Let's, you know, create breakout rooms within your Zoom technology or blue jeans or whatever we use and then do it we didn't really understand it in the beginning and our, our exercises were failing uh, to even bring leadership together. So there are lots of learnings that are happening and you know everyone's learning. So the one thing that I keep telling the leaders is, I'm not a champion of knowing how to handle the COVID crisis, but neither are any of any one of us. So we'll have to just use collective wisdom and just simple logics to sort of solve a lot of problems that we are, or, or, or situations that we face. So that's a uh, uh, still learning journey for us. Thank you, Pooja. In fact, I thought I'll let everybody know we just touched the 100 mark with uh, the attendees. So that awesome. was a good century. And in fact, <laughs> you reminded me of uh, March, right? So uh, even our lease was expiring for our office and we were hunting for force major clauses and whatnot. Like, and luckily, we terminated our lease as well. <laughs> but I think the key takeaway I have from you is that like, like we're going to get things wrong in the first shot because yeah. like we've not experienced this before. And how do we sort of like move on from those failures? Uh, there's a concept called radical candor by Kim Scott. And I think that's a very interesting concept, which everybody would love. But sort of moving on, uh, I would also sort of love to hear uh, from Rohit, Dinesh, Nitin, you as well on uh, the same question that was asked by Prashi right now, that how have you done anything to make your managers future ready, uh, HR manager specifically? So I think when we really talk about COVID-19, I think it has really struck us hard. And I think everybody is looking to HR to provide support and anchor, given it's a lot to more to do with the people aspect of it, people working from home, managers. And I think one of the things that really stuck is that today, from a mindset perspective, not many of the managers today we have in corporates are, are okay with their team working from home. And that is a set of whatever you want to call it, Gen, Gen X or whatever. But really, when you start working, work from home kind of scenario, you understand that how the gaps in terms of style of working starts emerging. You know, you, I have seen a couple of managers who are not able to get instructions in one single go to their team. And the constant exchange keeps on happening, which makes it a lot more inefficient, especially when you start working from home. So really, that is one thing in terms of how do you equip your managers, you know, to be able to work efficiently and smoothly when they're working remote becomes one big challenge. And I think HR being at the helm of him, you do, people really look up to in terms of how can they give quips, et cetera, to these people to really do that. The second most biggest thing is that many managers have an idea that, okay, if my team is not working in front of me, probably they're whiling away time on Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, TikTok. Now it's banned in India and all of that. How do you really create that, that factor of trust and the factor of comfort? And I think when people are looking at, at HR, they end up looking at, can you create, help us create that environment of trust? Because many a times I've seen that people who are working from home are in a constant pressure to prove themselves because they see that if my boss is not seeing me working in front, he's thinking probably I'm biling away time. So I think at Uran, what we really have tried to do is that how do you create that element of trust between the managers and the employees? And I think it starts with HR themselves being are they really able to trust each other and, and the leaders? So I think that really becomes an important element if it has to sustain. Today, yes, we have a problem of COVID. We are forced to work from home. But can it really become a reality for us? And it all will depend upon how equipped managers are to be able to communicate with teams now without being present in front of them and the factor of trust. So I think at Uran, what we have tried to really focus upon is that how do you create those moments of, of conversations which really help people open up and be more comfortable and rather than feeling that, okay, I will be viewed and judged otherwise in case 
uh, are working from home. So they end up putting 120, 130% more and finally burn out. You know? So I think... Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I think I really like the trust element that you just brought up, right? And why I want to like, go a little deeper with you on that is both on LinkedIn and in the Q&A right now, which also happens to be a third topic, is that like at a time of continued uncertainty, right? Like, so how do you build trust, like you just said, uh, and to keep people engaged and energized? So Kritika from Class Plus also asked that, you know, like how do you keep them engaged? Like what is your strategy around it? Like, because we know it's so, how do you keep them uh, as, as Dinesh and others are talking, certainty, uh, uncertainty is the new way of certainty here. So I think communication, I think becomes the most important element. And when we start talking about communication, there has to be an authenticity, you know, in your communication, how, how, how honest you are in your communication, you know, and I, that, that really, I think makes a lot of difference in terms of when you communicate, for example, one of the things that end up happening is that while social media is a, a, a boon, it's a bane that a lot of wrong information gets circulated. People have been uh, asked to leave in terms of there's a kind of anxiety level that's created. Okay, there are so many companies who have gone for pay cut, etc. Are we the next company that are going to go through and all that? And in this entire journey, we realized that probably communication, having 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 virtual town halls where people are being heard more than spoken and trying to say something to them, you know, which will not hold to. I mean, there are there are there are cases where we have seen that certain startups ended up saying that okay, we will. Uh, tied over this, there's not going to be any kind of pay cuts, etc. And you end up giving these these tall claims, and and one one and a half months down the line, you are going on the spree of you know cutting people, etc. The trust is lost. So I think in these time it becomes very important how honest you are. For example, when it came to Iran, we were very clear in terms of okay, we really don't know what the future holds, but given the scenario where we are. These are the few things that we can do to make sure that we are doing the things in the right fashion for the organization and for the country. So I think that really helps in, in you know, putting people together, rallying them together for a purpose. And I think that has really been one of the success factors for we as a company in terms of last three, three and a half months, how we are really able to manage and make sure that people are really committed to the purpose. So communication and honesty in the communication. I think that is the only answer to this. And... Uh, that's my, my my own way of looking. I think there are, uh, let me add, Tanne, if, you, if you're okay. Uh, I think the answers to both questions, the previous one and, and the one that you just asked, I think somewhere converge, right, in my view. Uh, and we can, we can use this example. For instance, I think there are three things in my view to build trust as well as to uh, enhance capability of the HR team. Right? Uh, uh, both different problem statements, but, you know, uh, I see some convergence. One is uh, the ability to take the right kind of risks. So uh, in, the, in the organizational context, it translates to how do we empower managers to take certain decisions that are the right, that are right calls, which may not, you know, in, in a normal circumstance could be layered with approvals and so on, but you empower people to make the right call at the right time to build trust. Um, uh, the second one really is about cutting through the clutter through data, right? Now, Every, everybody uh, I know has views and opinions and so on and so forth. Uh, and I'll give you two different examples. So somebody the other day came and said, look, there's so much of attrition in my team, right? A very simple one. And I said, you know, let's look at the data. It actually turned out to be the lowest attrition ever, right? Just if you looked at past trends for the one for 12 months, it was the lowest ever. Now it's a historic low. It is perception. I, I, you know, it, and I don't blame them because it's just so, uh, you know, accentuated by so many things. Similarly, in an organizational context, when Nitin speaks about, let's say, being transparent and authentic, it's also important to share that, look, this is what we had planned. This is where we've reached, right? And this is the milestone that we need to achieve. Uh, and therefore, some of these actions that we are taking either on the people side or the cost side or whatever it is, right, is linked to this kind of metric or milestone that we want to achieve. That builds a lot of confidence that, look, you know, people are not fibbing, right? I mean, they're just being honest and this is the situation. Uh, and the third really is, uh, in my view, problem solving, right? Uh, so therefore, getting to help that individual, in this, in this case, probably the HR manager, building that skill, uh, or in an organizational context, making we, we, are, we have tough choices in front of us, right? The, uh, it's a choice between the devil and the deep sea. Now, either you keep cribbing that, you know, I, I don't know what to do or I give up, or you say that, look, let's problem solve and get to a certain outcome that may not be the best, but it's probably the most optimal in the circumstances, right? 
so these are three ways i i really feel uh, adding to what uh, nitin already said you 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 build trust but more importantly subject to you know at a functional level building this capability will go a long way in addressing maybe some of the problems got it so uh, dinesh i think uh, with that we can at least establish that we've covered the trust topic but uh, and i love bharam's question and i'll love to take that in the end because it's a heavy one so we can we can come to smriti from namura and like we have a question on engagement again right so in this case it's specifically for millennials like nitin was saying your intellectual work was how do you keep the intellects engaged right so how are you engaging your millennials specifically open to all panelists because you have a young workforce and how do you really measure how they're feeling because like engagement like again like you said can be a perception so how do you engage your millennials and how do you measure the engagement for the same well um maybe i could say uh at olex i think largely the population is millennials uh, and and to be able to engage in the current time or otherwise you know it's it's almost same but i think right now we've just accelerated the engagement um uh, sort of uh, tools and and also different topics of engagement that we've tried to bring in so one is your core job which probably is non negotiable and then how do you spend or unwind yourself time away from screen or do something on the screen but don't do it related to work right so those are some things that we've we've tried to do so we've given people like the whole pie chart they can go and pick out what they want to from there so there are uh, for for fun sake there is also zumba and for real work there are intellectual sessions going on at the same time there are webinars going on on mental health there are webinars going on on nutrition uh there is um there is men speed mentoring going on of people there's hackathon going on at the same time so a lot of things are happening parallelly to keep everyone engaged uh but largely i think the most important part is to give people the space to do what they want to do in what engagement model they want to get in and when you talk about measuring we did launch like you know in uh, i think in the early start when we had actually put everybody work from home we had to run two or three well employee wellbeing surveys and we did that in like 15 days gaps and we tried to see the mood of the company on various questions including the question as do you connect with your manager every day weekly or monthly you know how do you connect with your manager in the current times so you put all of those questions and you figure out what's the mood of the organization how is the manager employee relationship moving through the weeks and you see that data and then you start making meaning out of that data that you know okay there is also screen fatigue that is kicking in where the connections have gone down a bit because initially everybody connected and then everybody knew to be able to start a conversation you needed to do, needed to do a small talk like how's everything at home you know is your family okay i can see something on your thing or you know whatever type of small talk you want to do you do that and then you get on to the point there were people who would just get straight to the target question is how many things were done today how how is the work done today regardless of whether are you alive dead you have an issue or not so you know you had this wide variety of people but then you realized that you know connections really started to dip a bit so you had to bring the connection ecosystem back up and those are things that you have to constantly keep measuring to be able to see so we we have actually gone through multiple employee wellbeing surveys to be able to keep us honest as to are we doing the right things like lnd uh, i was telling tanmay the other day that in the first week when everybody was working from home one of the teams actually clocked 948 hours or something in like a week of training and then uh, me and my ceo we were sitting and thinking okay they've done 948 hours of training what are they going to do after this like you know what is more that they would want to consume after this so you have to also think about how do you space things out and how do you make things more meaningful for people to have those fun moments but also moments of hardcore effort to be able to change a lot of outcomes that you're looking for um and uh, obviously there is no one size fits all right now and we really don't know whether it is going to let us sail through or not we are still navigating through that uh, thank journey thank you pooja i think i feel just just to add on to what pooja was saying why we have done a lot of these things one of the important uh, insight we had was that when you work from home your family is an important part and it often disrupts them you know 
So one of the things that we tried to do when we were trying to engage the HR team was in terms of how can we conduct a session where the family is involved in the entire thing because you have kids at home, they don't understand if dad is at home, he has to be there with me. I don't know what he's doing on phone and hangouts most of the time. So we really did something within the HR team and then some other teams also did where we involved family into that one hour, we call the bucker session, where it was all about doing random things, trying to find out random things and where the family was involved. So, so many people they end up seeing on, on, on the cam and on the camera so many days. So how are they able to relate? So I think that really also tries to, uh, I think, maybe engage the family also in terms of what your dad or your mom is doing, sitting at home and yet being on in front of the hangouts every day. You know, so I think we really try to do that. And that really helped in terms of taking out some kind of conflict at home in terms of why mom or dad are not spending time with us. You know, so I think that is something that we try to do unique. And I think it worked for us. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I just can't hold myself. Sorry, Tanmay, I have to say this because my team was really innovative here. So one thing that we did globally is we did like a care challenge where we had to pass on things through people. Uh, and create like a great video. So we did it through, I think around nine countries uh, across some 50, 60 people and we managed those things. And then we got that engagement through. But the other one was the real exciting one that the teams really came up with. They came with work from home memes. So which is like, you know, sounds like sleeping. So this is the reality, but the video is on and that's what the boss is expecting you to do. You know, and it was hilarious. We have so many memes right now in the office going on of different sorts of things. And that's also generated the space for people to be able to do what they want to do. You know, so I think that's generated a lot of engagement uh, equally. Thanks, Pooja. Thanks, Pitan. I love the excitement in the room, but uh, I think Rohit is seriously been observing all of us. So uh, Rohit, like I, I, I really like the topic uh, on Saturday when we were discussing how are you or how are CHROs personally dealing with the crisis, right? How are your leaders personally dealing with the crisis? How are you helping your managers deal with the crisis? Like personally speaking, and since Nitin mentioned family as well, like I'm sure that is a challenging aspect. So Rohit, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Sure. Um, I, I just, a few thoughts. Um, I think as CHRO, um, one at an organization level, uh, what we've done is, uh, what, what I launched about, uh, about two, about six weeks back was something called a, Organization network analysis, uh, a deep uh, ONA, which which looks at uh, not just the work work relationships but informal relationships, uh, you know, trust relationships, uh, culture relationships. I mean, um, the senior thousand people around the world, uh, who do they go to, both for formal and informal, you know, discussions? And 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 this came to specific with, with leadership and people, right? So we 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 and, and it was very transparently done. So we now have a mapping around the world of uh, people who are who are networks uh, in, in a kind of a web if you think of a web you know, kind of a thing who are keeping the organization together we you know people who maybe are not as as uh, connected uh, as uh, they may like to be so so i think at a overall leadership level we are now going to have downstream actions after the the, the organization network uh, like analysis of how do we increase the connectedness on all these parameters and uh, you know and make our culture strong. That's one. Uh, at uh, at at the employee level, you know, at the employee level, like like Pooja spoke and and, and Yunti spoke, a lot of engagement around uh, around employees, and, and that's where again the HR team coming into uh, you know playing a very very critical role. And I think leading to your question also about how does HR rise to this occasion, uh, you know, uh, one of course is is I think as as you spoke about authentic communication. I would say second one to me is uh, is leadership. Uh, you know, not all people are, are created equal, right? So, so you have some people from within HR or within a business or or, or within anybody who will show more leadership and proactiveness at kind of you know managing to the situation. Second thing also is expertise. Uh, you know that that thing about learning or or what I would call a growth mindset. Uh, you know to kind of look at every challenge as how can I learn from it and and, and then using those people as catalysts again to drive change within the organization. So, so, so at a people level, I mean, if you think about it, you are in a, in a workspace with 100 people doing a session uh, and now you're doing it virtually with, with as again, Pooja mentioned, some people, you know, uh, being off the screens, doing emails somewhere else, watching something else, but you still have to engage with them, right? So I guess at, at, at the employee level, was our, uh, 
was a second element. The third thing, again, uh, a lot of my panelists said was around uh, looking at mental health. Uh, realizing that mental health is, uh, is not a taboo. Uh, you know, it's not a taboo and for, it's okay for people to speak about it. And giving them enough opportunities, forums, having uh, managers be sensitive about this as well. Because again, the trust thing about, are my people working or are they playing trant? you know, is, is something that could be in the minds of, of, of many managers, right? So how, how do you make a manager realize the fact that, hey, the, the, uh, the, the, the PRAs are, are very well, uh, you know, prescribed, are, are there. Um, how do you have conversations, you know, with, uh, with, with employees as a group, in a cohort, one-on-one, -on -one, whatever works, to help them speak about what they are going through personally as well. And that could be in a fun situation, like a newsletter, you know, where we have memes and stuff. It, it, it could be uh, in one-on-one in, in, in -on conversation as well. So I think keeping all these elements together has been one, I would say, overarching uh, a theme or a strategy of how we've been working through. And, and, and like I said at the beginning, there have been no perfect answers. You know, we may not get the right, uh, the answers may not be all uh, what I may want it to be, but as, as long as we are working in that direction and, and the organization is seeing us authentic, concerned, uh, and open to ideas, uh, uh, my sense is, you know, we'll get out of this um, much stronger than we were before. Thanks, Rohit. Like, that was really helpful. And uh, I really liked what you shared about uh, the Accenture Mental Wellbeing Initiative as well. So if you could just share a line on that, would love to do that and then jump right into Q&A. Sure. So, so, so again, uh, at, at, at Accenture, uh, you know, before there was an Accenture, and we have about 200,000 employees there. And, uh, you know, it, it is virtually like a mini township. I mean, if you think of 200,000 employees and whatever you would think can happen in a city uh, would be happening with our employees. Uh, and, uh, and, and I think uh, our, our organization was very future focused to be aware about this and set a lot of programs uh, and elements in motion to help us, uh, uh, I would say, like uh, work through this. So I think one of the elements we got about, I think about two, two and a half years back was around mental health. Uh, and we got in mental health as, and as a part of our, uh, our, uh, our kind of insurance policy as well. So our insurers covered mental health, you know, as, as, as we went forward. And uh, we got in a, an, an app as well. We, we, we kind of discovered an app and we said, you know, can we, uh, you know, can we have this app on a phone and can the phone in a way, and that app in a way uh, talks to the employee, you know, quite like uh, your, your app, uh, you know, I, I, I have sharing with you as well uh, uh, around, now, how is an employee feeling that day? Uh, and, 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 and it was an AI-based app. So based on the responses of the person, uh, the app could suggest uh, counseling, could, uh, could, could suggest speaking to a peer, a boss. If it's a case of a suicide kind of thing, could, could, uh, you know, could also raise the alarm. So I, I think the entire element of health, not just being um, physical health, but also mental health. And, and, and how do you co-opt your, your co-workers, you know, around you, your friends that work around you, because otherwise just for HR or a boss, you pretty much know what's going on in every person's mind is very difficult, right? But in that small work group, uh, you know, quite like you have fire, you know, fire, uh, fire champions, you know, at, at every day at work, how do you have mental health, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, people who are, who are kind of perceptors uh, and, and, can, and can give advice, you know, to, to employees going through stuff? Was, was one more thing we started. Um, again, there's a lot of element uh, around content moderation, what, what people see at work or whatever it's also that, you know, you know, that many third party organizations do. So again, how um, a, a lot of fun at work elements or whatever also focus on mental health was also something that we drove there. So I think NetNet, as I saw on, uh, you know, on, on, on the screen as well, mental health in my mind uh, already is and will become uh, an even more important, uh, important part of what organizations and, and HR, uh, HR team members will have to deal with you know, as we go forward. And, and I think that's where the empathy, the sensitivity, the curiosity, uh, and the connectedness uh, you know, with our employees you know, uh, uh, you know, will be very, very important for us to, uh, not just as HR, but I think as a complete, uh, complete ecosystem, uh, you know, have, have to work with and drive as we go forward. Thanks, Rohit. So we have about six minutes left. So the way we can structure the next six minutes is we have about 20 questions. So we'll do a rapid fire and hopefully one to two sentence like, you know, mic drop answers if we can. So with Behram, we can start. So he essentially is trying to ask what should not change, right? Because we're talking about the new normal. 
what should not change what needs to continue like so any any ideas from any of you guys open to all four panelists well i think if i were to think about it i would say uh building leadership capability and their uh, ability to handle uh different situations and also uh engagement and connection should not change i think they have always been the lifeline of keeping the groups together and within that eq the the i don't know what we said i think an element of, on on eq growing eq yeah. uh i i think smarts have always been uh, kind of you know acknowledged but i think that emotional the softer part yeah. of any leader i'm not talking hr over here any leader uh, that that should that focus should not change yeah i think i think the the level of trust that we build with uh, employees um and any other stakeholders let's say peers managers uh, that that cannot change right i mean it's a uh, and i'll you know take the liberty of actually narrating a very small incident uh, just to illustrate this you know there was this i got a mail from one of the employees uh, who unfortunately in a different geography unfortunately had to uh had to you know look at another another company for career that person lost two parents due to covid okay uh very very unfortunate right but despite all this the person actually took out time to write a note uh saying how thankful that person was because of the support and the uh, uh the support that you know that person had received right now that just goes to show that the that the leadership team or Uh, team members in that in that geography did a fantastic job of building trust and despite the tough situation they were able to you know get great goodwill uh, despite tough circumstances right i think that's something that we need to retain as a character uh, because this we don't we just don't know how long this will be and even if even if it's short lived right i think that character should not uh, should not go away i think it's communication and connect as everybody is talking uh, as pooja was saying that the uh, one of the teams had done 930 hours of training in one week and then what next i think very often when it is continuous for a very long time we often find it boring and we often find it why there is a need you know for you to connect again and communicate you know how many times you'll communicate the same thing the scenario is not changing but i think the real beauty is that you should not lose that touch and connect and communication in the entire piece even if this situation goes for 6 months 3 months 4 months a periodic connect is very important even if you do not have much much anything major or different to share i think it becomes important for you to connect regularly thanks nitin in fact i thought i'll also pick up the most voted question on linkedin as well so this was from ankur wariko where he said what is the best and worst thing about people management when you move from an mnc to a startup <laughs> I think the right. best thing, uh, the best thing I I I I think is the speed uh, when you move to a startup. I think the speed of reacting. Uh, you know, I think in a in a MNC, the bureaucracy in some ways kind of kills you. Uh, the, 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 the 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 number of people you got to inform before you do something. And the speed I think is amazing. The 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 worst thing I would say, a challenge I would say is, uh, I think we take more people for granted in startups than we do in the MNCs. uh and and uh, that's that's my sense and and that could be a sense of uh, ownership maybe because even uh, there's a lot of ownership in this thing i'm i'm still under, I'm, i'm still grappling with the entire startup thing i'm, I'm still uh, you know kind of new to this but, but but i think we we take people for far more granted over here which i think in the mncs there's a lot more uh, a lot more respect in that sense uh, you know from an employee standpoint uh, you know here i think we we take them more for granted yeah i think uh, for me personally you know uh, i've been around in this in this space now for about 5 years so it's been a uh, it's been a huge learning i think i agree with rohit on speed uh, speed of execution speed of thought speed of decision making uh, there is just huge amounts of autonomy right uh, there is just a huge level of autonomy that you have which uh, which helps you make the right decisions and be held accountable for those decisions there is you know the buck stops with uh, with the final decision maker there's nobody else no global no asia pac no xyz organization to look up to and say you know can let me ask you if i've done this right or not right that's that's both uh, you know empowering as well as uh, it can be quite daunting right depending on the nature because there are some decisions that can can be reversed which are still okay 
some are fairly irreversible right and therefore you know sifting through that and making that is important the third thing uh, which i absolutely love is i think uh, in at least in a startup when at least it's young and small and it's growing the level of camaraderie is uh, at a whole different place i've never experienced that camaraderie ever in my previous lives right uh, it's because then you are part of everything that you do and it comes with both pulls and pressures i mean there is no distinction between you know office and the uh, home anymore uh, because you're so consumed i think that's also part of the challenge uh, the, the the one one challenge uh, is you know there's always this trade off because we all like speed and we all like new things uh, the, the the biggest challenge is do you do you continue on that journey or do you also take a pause and say you know let me let me stabilize something and then i can move on to a faster ship i think that's 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 one challenge that i uh face in a startup i think but there are there are more benefits uh, that i see thank you dinesh i think time's up so we we'll just take about a minute for a poll we guys had to see the sentiment in the room today so maybe and raj you can trigger the poll and after the poll we can finish dot at 4 5 we'll take a couple more questions as well so angraj if you could trigger the poll right away i think just we launched it just launched it this is the polls we can drive a quick discussion as well I hope everyone can see the poll. Everyone in in attendance, uh, you would have received the poll. Okay, yeah, people have started filling it out. Okay, awesome. Can the panelists see the results? No. 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 Once once it's done, I, I'll publish it. Then everyone can see it. All right. So we'll give this just one more minute. A lot to learn from the attendees. All right. So while you guys are taking about the next thirty seconds to answer this as well, I thought. Uh, i'll go to um the next question we have the top voted question is samira so we've covered of course how do we get managers ready uh, how do you have everyone trust hr by default and not come with the preconceived notion that hr cannot be trusted in fact i think even on uh, linkedin somebody sort of mentioned some really long messages on why like by default uh, hr is not trusted like how, how can we address that bit at scale I think by by making managers more accountable at uh, at one level, uh, you know the the number of managers. Uh, uh, I would say two things. Uh, the first, managers more accountable for for cleaning up their mess themselves. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, the mess is managed by HR, and uh, and that's the reason why HR is. I mean, in, in, in the the basic element of HR is you know we 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 are the givers of the bad news, right? That's that's one. Uh, the second one I would say is for HR to to really look at the confidentiality. Uh, you know or, or or the discussion between the employee and the and the hr person as as a person to person conversation which we, which has to be held with sensitivity uh, and and leadership as well so hr also should not become a mouthpiece or a earpiece you know of the of the business or, or the manager and hold its own uh, in terms of you know what uh, what 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 stand you should be taking you know for the employees uh you know and not always for the business you know as, as we go forward so i think i, I think one each uh, i would i would put it at that yeah maybe even i would kind of say the same thing but i would also say from an hr standpoint uh going back to people with actions and resolving situations versus you know listening only we're not just a listening post i think resolution of of the situation and closing of the loop is extremely important for gaining trust whether you solve it fully or you don't solve it fully or whether anything happens i think the loop closures are so important that it automatically gains uh that sort of an acceptance and trust um and obviously i think managers need to own more in terms of their own situations and solve their own problems all right so i think with this we can close now the poll results are very interesting we have an even split where the highest issue across the attendees is visibility on culture issues across their workforce followed by employee mental wellness 
only half of the people are using a platform at the same and of course the rest of the questions we can take offline but any closing words or sentences from any of you because i noticed a lot of energy bubbling which i had to control <laughs> so final statement one sentence before we end i think i think learn from this uh, learn from this experience it's it's a once in a lifetime experience yeah this is probably the best best opportunity for hr professionals to thrive right i mean nothing challenges more than more than a a, a situation like this yeah i Absolutely. think use time effectively to focus on yourself and and uh, at least pick one skill that you always wanted to uh, because this is your time your opportunity so i think same here opportunities never come often this is the opportunity where we can rise up so i think let's do our best thanks guys i think even if we all end today like moving from oh my god it's covid to oh wow it's covid like it's an opportunity that's great for all of us so thank you so much all four of you it's an absolute pleasure to be speaking with everybody we were able to retain 90 of 100 attendees so far but <laughs> thanks guys thank you so much with this we can conclude our first power panel at it zero Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Tanmay. Thanks, Anuraj. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.